I think after this whole uh, real uh, the stolen air conditioner deal, I need to say a little bit about landlording. Okay, landlording. I in my mind, I break them down into there's two types of landlords. So if you want to be a landlord, there's passive, and then there's active. Okay, and what I mean by that is. Uh, uh, passive, I don't mean like a, re a real estate investment trust, a REIT or anything like that. What I'm talking about is somebody who buys units and then he um, has someone else manage them and has it all, everything taken care of and he either gets a check or he might have to pay, you know, at the end of the month. But it's, you know, all those the issues that I deal with are eliminated. Um, he has a management company and bankers and things like that. On the active side, well, I'm more a little bit quasi uh, active and passive. I would definitely say I'm active, but I mean that what I'm saying is I have my accounting taken care of and rent collection. So my bookkeeping is taken care of, my rent collection. I have a management company do that because there's not enough time to do everything. I have a full-time job. I can't do it all. So, um, but all the maintenance, all of that stuff, any of the rehab, all of those things I take care of, you know. Uh, in emergencies, I have them do it, so that takes takes stress on, off of me. But if you were completely active, you would take care of all the renting, evictions, co rent collection, leases, the fix up, everything. Calling your guys. That's how you could probably make the most money. But you're putting time in. You're selling your time. So, um, but the main thing for active is you have to have the stomach for it because okay, you're gonna have problems like I had this week. And you can't be the type of person that takes that problem and then like compresses it down. I mean, you know those people that take something and something bad happens to them and they add it to the list of stuff why they shouldn't be doing stuff. And they compress it down and compress it down. And then in about, you know, a, a year after they've had a building, they're like, I need to sell this thing. And then they have a horror stories and they probably go out and write a book about carburetors sitting in bathtubs and roaches. And, you know, they write, you know, a story of bad eviction they had, you know. Shit. I mean, some of those things I've been through, I, I don't even remember the stories anymore because you have to let it go. You got to let it go, otherwise, you can't do it. Okay. So, passive and active. Now, the other thing is, um, you know, how you're going to get there. Okay. How you're going to get to, you know, if you decide to become a landlord, you, you know, usually it's because you have a plan or a dream of having X number of units you know like four family of four unit you know so you pick out a number of units that you want and you have to there's probably gonna be another video on like the good and bad between a house versus a two family versus a four family versus a multi comp you know a big complex and that's a whole nother issue but as far as leverage on how you get there it's probably should have another thing on leverage and that's what we'll do that again in another video on you know whether you're the type of person that can handle leveraging uh, you know, using banks or whether you're doing more like what I'm doing, which I used to do that. Now I'm doing this is where I'm, I'm working more with what I got and building up from, you know, from scratch. So, you know, it's, it's a great business to be in. Um, you can do it at whatever levels you want, you know, whatever your comfort level is. And, uh, but you do have to have a certain personality type.